Hello STEM enthusiasts and welcome to this new episode of Scientix TV. Today we talk about the ethics of using artificial intelligence in education. We're going to talk about starter packs with resources created by Intel and as always a fun science demonstration. This month we turn magic into science for a demonstration that will wow your students. Are you ready? We know that artificial intelligence is on everybody's mind. And we had a full episode on artificial intelligence in education back in October, which you can rewatch in our YouTube channel. Now, in that episode, we discussed the many ways that you can integrate artificial intelligence in, in educational contexts, but we did not discuss the ethical implications of using AI in classes. So we're addressing that today, and for that we've invited Professor Anna uh, Coyne from the School of Social Science and Technology at the Technical University of Munich to talk uh, to us about some exciting resources for teachers on the topic of the ethics of AI and its use in education. Hi Anna, thanks for joining us today. So why is it so important to discuss the ethics of AI in education? Thanks for the question. So I think it's important to discuss the ethics in, um, of AI in education because of the increase um, of AI within education, especially now. And so developing AI ethics literacy is important because um, the higher use of AI in education can really impact um, how learning happens and also um, what is being learned. And so Educators and young people, I think, really need to understand the ethical implications of introducing a range of AI um, tools and technologies into educational situations to be able to make informed decisions about whether and how to use these um, tools and technologies within their courses um, and, um, and different kind of activities. And why did you decide to create learning scenarios and go through discussions with students? Thanks for this question, um, Agata. So, so we really wanted to um, work directly with educators and young people. And so for us, it was really this idea of being able to identify and name ethical implications of AI on teaching and learning um, through the engagement with different scenarios. and. Here we um, have the opportunities to kind of think about what topics might come up um, in your own classroom if you were to imagine um, or, or, or running a scenario like this or an activity like, like the ones that we included in the scenario within your um, educational settings. And so this is really for educators to think through how can they ensure the safety of young people um, as they're considering the integration of AI within educational situations. It is very true that uh, navigating the use of AI with students is key for an informed society. Now, what is the advantage of these learning scenarios for teachers and students? For us, it was important to design these scenarios in a way that show the use of AI in kind of student-centered ways. Um, so for instance, um, one of the scenarios is really looking at um, AI generative arts um, to make beautiful images or what we might consider as beautiful images. Or another one is looking at deep fake uh, to transport yourself or transport youth um, into the future of being an engineer. And so these seem really fun and exciting, but there are also kind of ethical creeps involved in those. And so while um, educators, but also youth, engage in discussions around the scenarios and imagining how could they play out in their their own educational settings, they really um, start to bring ethics to the fore through these kind of conversations and this engagement. Thanks, Anna. So what's next for the project? So right now we are um, moving the scenarios into AI ethics activities, so ways in which to really actively use AI um, and accompanying these with an online tool um, for folks to try these activities out. And so we are in the process of uh, working together with educators through co-design sessions um, to really develop this online tool and to further design the activities in ways that are really useful for educators across Europe. And so we'd love to invite um, 
educators um, to sign up and join our sessions and to engage with us and and see how how we can really learn from their own experiences, but also um, how we can support them in using AI in a safe way. Another thing that we're working on right now is developing kind of assessment tools that could help educators evaluate how they see AI ethics um, in action within their own um, settings. So for example, when people or when young people um, start to talk about the use of AI and um, the kind of risks and ethical implications, um, we're trying to develop tools for educators to really be able to point at, differentiate and name particular ethics principles and how they show up in teaching and learning so that they can kind of guide um, young people toward AI ethics literacy as well. Thank you, Anna. We really like these learning scenarios here at Scientix TV. They've sparked great conversations by the water cooler. In fact, we like them so much that we have invited an old friend to show us how they work. Hi, Chatty. Hello, Ageda. Thank you for having me. I am honored to be back. AI in education is a concept that can be intimidating or even scary for teachers. It is also important to help guide students so they can understand what is acceptable, what is not, and how to navigate AI online. This is why the learning scenarios are a great resource for teachers, as they help them guide students through a thorough thought process. Clicking on the icon at the right of the screen, on the web page linked in the description of the video, you will be able to open a single document that includes 10 learning activities, covering a wide range of topics from AI generative art apps to the use of AI augmented facial recognition software. For example, have you ever wondered what a deep fake is? If they can be used in class, or whether they even should be? One of the lessons focuses on that. On each learning scenario, you first discover a background situation, for example asking students to create a deep fake to foster engineering identities. Then some key questions are used to prompt engaging conversation and deep reflection among students. Each learning scenario also includes some evidence-based information with important concepts and considerations to help the educator guide the conversation. In the appendix, you will find useful visuals and tools that can be used as part of the lesson. It's that simple. Thank you, Chatty. That's very well explained. Anything else? Thank you, Ageda. Making things easy is my primary function. If you go back to the web page, you can also click on the image below to access the form that will let you sign up for a co-design session, where educators can help design future resources. Excellent. Thanks, Chatty. Goodbye, Ageda. If just like us, you're very interested in the ethical implications of using AI in education, check out the learning scenarios on the Institute for Ethics in Artificial Intelligence uh, portal of the Technical University of Munich using the link in the description of the video. A big part of challenging yourself as an educator is to continuously learn new skills and competences. In particular, in STEM fields, uh, that requires adopting new technologies to create innovative learning experiences. Uh, for this reason, we're very excited to welcome Christel Lau, Intel Skills for Innovation Global Program Manager, who is going to tell us about the Intel SFI Starter Packs. Hi, Christelle. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, very happy to be here on Scientix TV. We have seven mindsets and skill sets that we focus on. So starting from social emotional learning as the base, then we have design thinking and computational thinking as the two mindsets, and then four skill sets, which are programming and coding, data science, modding and simulation, and AI and machine learning. So uh, what are starter packs? And you know what can a teacher get if they download a starter pack? So a starter pack is basically a package of lesson resources that teachers can use with students in class. So when you download it on our platform, you will get a zip file. And within the zip file, you have firstly a teacher guide. So a teacher guide is for a teacher to prepare for the lesson. So uh, say they have like lesson objectives, uh, also you know how to set up the hardware, software, uh, how does this integrate with uh, the curriculum, and uh, of course, you know an activity guide. Then we have the in-class slide deck, which is basically like PowerPoint slides that the teacher can use uh, in class. These are all editable, so the teacher can modify it uh, so that it's more suitable for the local context. 
Then we have working files. So in most of our starter packs, in fact, in all of our starter packs, we use a range of software, right? Across all of our starter packs, we have 32 different types of software. And some of the software will require students to maybe do some 3D modeling and simulation. And so, you know, the students don't need to start from scratch. They can just upload the working files that we provide and uh, they can start uh, working on the starter pack. So our starter packs are met to grade levels, elementary, middle, and high, and also specific subjects. So this is because, you know, as an educator, we know that everybody is very busy and it's very hard to find time after school to do additional activities. So the starter packs were designed for teachers to use in class with students. And so not only do you hit your lesson objectives, you are also able to uh, equip them with future mindsets and skill sets and also use technology in class. So uh, let me give you one example uh, that is related to science. Right? So the title of the starter pack is VR Science Museum. So it's targeted at elementary students in the subject area of biology. And the skill set that we are targeting is modeling and simulation, and the mindset is computational thinking. So the objective of this lesson is for teachers to go through animal categorization, right? Like you would remember when you were in elementary or primary school, uh, you know, you would have to identify that a monkey is a, a mammal, uh, you know, a fish, reptiles. And so in a traditional classroom, a teacher would probably uh, create a worksheet like this, and students will have to fill it up. So this is an example of a starter pack, uh, uh, one of the slides from the teaching deck. So on top of learning about animal categorization, if teachers use the starter pack, then students will be encouraged to build their own virtual reality animal museum. And they will also learn how to categorize the animals. So what is more interesting or even more exciting is they can also use code blocks to make the animals interactive. So they can choose like when they when the animal is clicked, you can do something to the animal. So here is uh, an example uh, of uh, a student like artifact, right? So a student has gone through this starter pack and they created this. You know, this is a screenshot here. So they created uh, you know snakes in one enclosure and birds in one enclosure and you know a bear and a dog in another. And so this is to help show that they have learned how to categorize the animals. But it's interesting because they learn uh, how to use this in a virtual reality space. So if you would like to see this in um, on your own screen, you can scan this QR code or go to this URL and uh, you will be able to see the uh, student artifact. But I also want to show you uh, the interface for the code blocks. So for example, if a student pulled a gorilla and then they can click, okay, so when Play is clicked, right? So this is a play button. They can say the gorilla must say something, right? For example, the gorilla says, I'm a mammal, right? And there are many other actions in the code blocks that students can use. So you can see that, you know, students will learn the basics, right? Like how to categorize animals. But on top of that, in the same amount of time, they will also learn computational thinking and modeling and simulation concepts through the creation of VR, uh, a VR museum. So this will, you know, allow the teacher to infuse technology, teach future skills, but at the same time, um, you know, meet their curriculum objectives. Thank you, Crystal. Those uh, starter parks look like they're really ready to use. Now, if you want to get free starter packs, go to skillsforinnovation.intel.eu, click on register, enter the verification code you see on the screen now and fill in your information or scan the QR code you see in the top right corner of your screen. That will take you straight to a window where you can fill in your information. Then you will be able to log in back on the Skills for Innovation page. There you'll see the words Starter Pack at the top. You click on that, then click on Intel Starter Packs, and you'll be able to choose from among more than 100 starter packs to download. Intel is a close partner of Scientix through the STEM Alliance initiative, where we have more and more industry and education stakeholders working together to promote STEM careers and encourage more young people to join STEM studies. Now, check out the webinars on the Scientix uh, page, where you can view many recordings uh, with Intel and other industry partners that will inspire you with innovative teaching solutions for classrooms. I have a question for you. What do DNA, a PVC tube, 
and diapers have in common. No idea? I didn't know either before preparing for this episode. And the answer is that they all contain or are made of polymers. Guillermo is here for another session of Science in Action, where we explore what can be learned from plastic bags, water, and pencils. Intrigued? Well, keep watching. Hello, science enthusiasts. Today, I have a very funny and simple experiment for all of you. And we just need a few things that we can easily find in our homes. And of course, as always, the willingness to learn and have some fun. So, are you ready? What do we need for today's experiment? We just need some water, a Ziploc bag, like the ones we use to store food in the fridge, for example, and some pencils. You have to make sure that they are very, very sharp. How do we have to proceed for today's experiment? We just need to take our bag and we fill in with the water. It doesn't have to be completely full, just like that is more than enough for us. And when we're done, we have to make sure that the bag is well sealed. You don't have to leave a lot of air in this space, but you don't have to let the, all the air goes, go out. And when we are done, we have to make sure that there is no leaks. So, amazing. We're completely fine to go. So, before we continue, we take our glasses because safe is fun, is the finest fun. And then we can proceed. So, with our bag, we just have to make sure that the pencil pokes through and we take the pencil out on the other side. We have to do it gently, not with a lot of strength, but make sure to do it in one go. Just like that. And magical, we can see that there is no leak. And we can continue for as long as we want. We can add another pencil in here. And amazing, there's no leak. And another one. And you can actually Tell your students in the classroom to have a competition to see who manages to add the most pencil without any water leaking. And that's super fun. Like we have absolute no leaks. The reason why the, the bag is not bursting or any water is leaking is because of something called polymers. Polymers like cellulose or proteins or the plastic of this bag that we are using are chains of molecules that can stretch and bend to adapt themselves to any material, like for example, in this hole that we are making with the pencil. So when we poke through, these polymers adapt, stretch, and there's no leaking because of that. I wonder what may happen if I just squeeze the, the bag a little bit. We have to do it with strength this time, and we can see that the leak starts to pop up. And why this is happening? This is because now by adding tension to the bag, the holes get a little bit wider, and that's why the, the water starts leaking out. That was pretty fun, isn't it? Okay, you can now try to add some fun coloring to the, to the water if you want a more colorful experience, or you can try to add as many pencils as you want. This is Guillermo, and I hope you enjoyed this experiment. We will see each other next time for more Science in Action. Bye. Thank you, Guillermo and Antonio Baton from Greece for suggesting this fun demonstration that helps make learning about science a fun and simple experience. Do you have a fun science demonstration that can be used in class using simple items? Share it with us through the link you will find in the description of this video for a chance to be featured on a Scientist TV episode. And that's a wrap for episode 20 of Scientix TV. Oh, 20 episodes. How time flies when you're having fun sharing and exploring the world of STEM education. 
We hope you're having as much fun watching the Scientix TV episodes as we have making them. We look forward to seeing you next month for a new episode of Scientix TV, where we see the world through STEM glasses.